Thank you and good afternoon our viewers. My name is Amos Ohaga. I've written my name on the board and my cell number is uh, for contact purposes. The textbook that you're going to refer to is uh, authored by J. Van Umer. We'll tackle N5 marketing management and the summary on the board as you can see is module one. However, we shall only tackle three parts of this particular module, but I've summarized what is consistent or what it comprises of. The first one is the nature of product policy. We have classification of products and services, product development, we have the product life cycle, number five, repositioning, number six, product strategies, propositions, number seven, branding, and number eight, packaging, decision, and labeling. Now, last time we spoke about marketing, but in a different perspective. Here today we are dealing basically with the product which makes the essence of why organizations exist and why they are able to compete comparably in the market. Therefore, the nature of a product circle, we'll be looking at what is a product. The product is basically either it's a service or a tangible item that an organization comes up with, they develop it and package it for it to be able uh, to go into the market. And the market would be a targeted market where these particular products are required. So essentially, it is the heartbeat it is the reason why the organizations exist because when products are not there there is nothing they are able to offer or to sell and the consumers all the time will look at the products in the market that will be able to satisfy their needs so the product has to satisfy the need of the customer and that helps the organization to be able to make a big uh, leap into income or business wise the other aspect is that Consumers will all the time need to see that there are new products coming in the market. Therefore, continual development of products in a setup of an organization is very key. So every time you find the company might have two or three products and they are able to package them in different ways with different prices and also uh, label them for specific geographical market place. And that enables them to be able to reach their customers. The other item is consumers are not just consumers. They are categorized into different levels. We have consumers that are basically uh, daily items they want to be able to buy in their daily life and whatever they're consuming. But we also have industrial. Now, industrial products and we have consumer products, there's a difference. But as we go forward, we shall be able to look into that. Now, under the nature of policy, or rather, the product policy. It is important that every time uh, a product has come into the market, the clients are supposed to be certified. They are supposed to be happy with the product. They have to know what they are buying. And therefore, it is the mandate of the company to be able to explain what product are they selling, what are the benefits of that particular product. They have to be make sure that the information reaches the consumer without any uncertainty and it has to give him or give them an inch to be able to make sure that their products are moving and the products are basically selling. The other aspect is that the product is a test of the company. When the products are doing well, that means they are moving, people are buying, stocking, there is a lot of supply chain moving, then it means that the company has been tested through its own product. That's why organizations whose market scheme or let's say market base is stable and strong is as a result of having tested the market and they have found themselves very, very good at their work. So that means if they do not draw out that product from the market, it means that the market requires that product and the company has succeeded because the objective is to make sure that that product does not go off the shelf. So all the time, they will be able to ensure that uh, the product is available for the consumers. One more other aspect is that in the product policy, there has to be satisfaction. 
there has to be a continued solving of the problem. That means the product comes in as a solution. That's one thing that you have to know, that in this particular policy about the nature of products, depending on whatever it is, it has to be able to give a solution to the customers, to the consumers, or to those that want to buy and sell. And we also understand that through the psychological and also through the physical touch of this product, customers are happy with branded products. Those are just parts of what happens within the industry. So you find that products can sometimes be packaged differently. Probably last year, it was packaged in a different, uh, you know, branded packet or something that gives it a nice picture or a very good and uh, what you could call, it's like something attachable. So the clients will find attached to that particular product just because of the way it was packaged. So as a student who is doing marketing management, you have to understand that all these concepts add together to the value and the continuation of the product policy. Part two, we'll look at what we call market analysis to establish and know that if we come up with this particular product it is going to sell it will move off the shelf the clients or the customers or consumers will be happy and ready for that product so there is need for us to understand that concept enables the product and the organization to continually support and also produce what is going to be required in the market the Third point that I want us to look at is the concept of products. When you talk about the concept, you realize that there is core products, there is formal products. So we have core products, which specifically I will explain, and then we have formal products, and then we have we have the last one that gives us um basically total products now the core products it simply refers to the service or the tangible like you can be able to hold and say this is a pair of shoe or probably this is a kettle so you find that these are products which you can identify yourself with so it is the core it is the key item that somebody is looking at so it is there to satisfy the client. The formal one is basically now it is packaged and we are talking of physical items. When you go into a shop, for example, or you go into a supermarket or a hypermarket, you will find that all these products have been laid out. So formal in the sense that now it is a really good that somebody can be able to purchase and you know this is what you want. Total product. Um, I would like to tackle classification. Uh, classification of products is very key. That is why you don't sell all the products in one place. There have to be separation. There have to be uh, a clear layout. So when you go into consumer warehouse or a consumer shop, you are looking for items that are consumable. For instance, when you talk about bread, you talk about milk, you talk about tea leaves, you talk about sugar, these are consumables that are basically every time are bought by customers. So the nature of their movement is very fast and they are also convenient because customers look up to this for their daily lives, it's part of their lifestyle every day. Then we have industrial. Industrial products are basically, you could put that under machinery for instance. Maybe Toyota for example, they buy spare parts or they could buy 
batteries which are supposed to be put into new cars which are being produced so basically what will happen these are heavy stuff or these are not really edible these are things that we use so that we can apply them in the production sector or in the production in, uh, area within that particular organization now industrial products are varied also so we can talk about motor you could talk about uh, uh, furniture you could talk about uh, agricultural stuff you could talk about building so there's different types of products under that but industrial aspect comes in because when you use them to produce or to develop it's like using raw material so that you can be able to develop new products the last one under classification is service this is also a product basically people come up with ideas to be able to provide services for instance we have consultants and management we would have probably uh, doctors we're talking about lawyers for example we talk about insurance companies those are organizations that provide service and that service is a product so people will be able to buy it or rather they will be in need of it as well so they are able to offer the uh, that type of uh, service now i want us to look at product development to develop a product is essentially the basis of why organizations succeed or they do not succeed because if you come up with a product that is not going to move or is not going to satisfy your clientele base then it means all the effort that you put in will not help but before we tackle that there is what we call product mix the product mix is basically to say that in a specific production you could have different products within one line for example when we talk about car motor where we have um, vehicles being produced let's say take for example mercedes benz they are producing different types of mercedes class uh, in terms of their product so let's say mercedes benz so they could have c class uh, c class they have e class and this E class they come in different numbers. Let's say E class there is 450, you could find 270. C class there is 220, you could find 200. So in the type or in the issue of product mix, you will find that this is one organization producing or manufacturing cars. But every product that they have, there is a mix. The mix simply means that within one line of producing Mercedes Benz. We may have three, four, five lines, but we understand that the range is Mercedes Benz. So you realize that as they produce, depending on their customers' needs, you will find this C class are moving fast because there is a lot of need of people demand the C class. Unlike E class, which might be a little bit expensive and not moving, but still it is part of the product mix, which is basically available in that particular organization. So it is also part of developing uh, the product when you have those mix and you have put everything according to the requirements then you realize that your customers will always come for specific products that you have and that's why you realize the supply and demand becomes a factor when it comes to developing of the product so how do you continue to develop your product the most important point here is to, to understand that the, the moment you stop, the moment you stop to develop your product and you do not pay attention to the requirements of the market, including your own clients, you realize that that might stop or it might hinder the product from moving and also reaching different markets. Because maybe you started with the market A, you have B and market C. Now, these geographical areas will de uh, demand that your supply and your packaging and the products that they need must be able to satisfy their needs. So under project, uh, product development, there has to be rapidness in terms of the way you produce your products. That is one. Two, the changing of the market. There is a lot of Dynam uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic changes that take place in the marketplace. That means there are people who would be happy to buy this product 
for two years. After two years, if you don't come up with a new product, you may realize that your competitors have come up with something new, something good, packaged nicely, price is good, and it's available at their own fingertip. No wonder now we have online ordering and online buying because of the products that we can easily access online. So the changing of the market is very key. The other thing is the price. So when you do not look at your price and uh, affordability, that means that there are clients who always look for the best price they can get in the market. So you need to look at those and realign yourself so that your product is not going to be uh, dominant and maybe after some time it is out of market. And we said that in the beginning the reason why organizations exist is because of their products which they have developed and now they have brought them into the market. That becomes very key. Now, the product life cycle, if I just want to touch that briefly, uh, the, the key issue here is just like any other living thing that we may speak or think about, the products also have a life. That means if you have produced a specific chair that is being used now, for example, it could be folded, packaged, and then you ship it away. And there are those that cannot be packaged in that way. The lifestyle of people or customers regarding that product will determine the lifespan or how far that product can go in the market. So there has to be, there has to be a cycle that you, as the owner of the product, have to put into mind. The other thing is repositioning. Repositioning simply means you have to all the time do your research, make sure that your services and your products are aligned. And those that are basically the front soldiers or the front liners like your marketing team, your supervisors and those who are in charge of specific product lines, they have to all the time be up and on top of their game. That is to ensure that they know what their competitors are doing, that they are not able or they are not doing. And by so doing, they come in and say, look, from the month of June, for instance, or from next year, we are going to reposition ourselves in the market, but in this dynamic way, so that we can be able to tackle our market. That helps the organization to stay more, uh, rather to stay longer in the marketplace because of that repositioning. That's why we say marketing does not stop. If you stop marketing your products, basically you also stop to exist. And that is why it's important for you to understand that repositioning every time, it is very key. The other point on product strategies or decision, it is basically to come up with concepts to say, we are getting into a new millennium, for instance. We have gotten into online, it is now digital. How do we go ahead and position ourselves strategically to be able to say we can also get a niche or get substance out of the market? Probably you say we are going out of the country, we are going international or we are going regional. So how do you strategize yourself to ensure that your product can reach a bigger, uh, a bigger market than what you already started with? Branding, as we come to close, branding is basically the image. If you do not brand your market, sorry, your, your product, it's going to be a problem because people will not identify your product from the others. And remember, you're not alone in the marketplace. So I think that becomes very key that you have to brand. You have to ensure that when you brand your products, they have a specific, unique image which differentiates it from the others. The last one is packaging decision and labeling. These are also costs that go into products and when you package it, the decision to package label for people to identify because when you go to a, maybe you go to a store and you want to identify a specific product, how do you see it quickly? The customers do not want to wait so long looking for it. They would want quickly to say, once I go to that shelf, what I'm looking for is this. So there's a trademark, there's a label, and it is well packaged to be able to speak to you as the owners of that particular product. Now, I want to summarize by saying that out of the brief discussion on this particular module, you as a student or a learner is supposed to discuss to understand what does the product fulfill in terms of the company's development? What does product uh, 
policy fulfill to the organization. Secondly, we need to discuss new products which enables the company to grow and develop. So you should be able to do that. And as we come back, we will be able to tackle the other uh, subtopics more in detail because as you know, the, the summary that I've given is just to give you a starting point. Otherwise, thank you for having me this afternoon and you can refer to the, uh, the book that I just wrote on the board from page one up to 30, you'll be able to get key items regarding this module one. Thank you.